Now at 11, it happened again. A Tesla driver caught on camera asleep at the wheel. What auto safety experts say needs to happen now. Plus, a Salinas teenager followed to school by a stranger, but then another stranger saved the day. Now watching a trough of low pressure on the way in, that could bring us some wet weather. I've got the details coming up. And a controversial TV host gets another shot on screen. What changed for Billy Bush since his leaked Access Hollywood tape with President Trump? And if you were hit by the Equifax data breach, the rules to collect your cash has changed. What you need to do to get the payout. This is KION News Channel 546 at 11. A Salinas teenager who was followed by a stranger on her way to school gets some help. Good evening, I'm Erin Groff. She was walking to Alice L High School this morning when police say a man approached her. So she flagged down a random car, hopped in, and got a ride to school. KION's Alicia Machado joins us now after speaking with that driver. And Alicia, police do not agree with her move. Erin, while the girl is safe tonight, police don't recommend getting in a stranger's car, but the driver says she's glad she was able to help. It's a scary situation. Not something you might expect walking to school, a stranger following you down the street. But Monday morning, a girl on her way to Alice L High School had someone tailing her. Police say the unknown man started talking to her and walking next to her near Williams Road and Del Monte Avenue. As the girl was crossing the street, she waved down a car here near Alice L Community School to try to get away from the stranger. The driver, who she also didn't know, was able to get her to safety. That driver was Sandra Mendoza. I asked her what's going on. She says, this guy's been following me from the other bus stop and I'm scared. And I said, OK, I unlocked my doors and I told her to get in. Something Mendoza hopes a good Samaritan would do for her children if they were in this situation. I have kids and it's scary. You, don't, you never know what can happen. But Salinas Police spokesperson Miguel Cabrera says getting into another stranger's car was not the best idea. If you find yourself in a situation like this, that you separate yourself from the situation safely by going into uh, like a public building, uh, a business. The closest place in this case would have been the nearby elementary school. A reminder to always be aware of your surroundings. Police searched for the man that Mendoza said was in his 20s, wearing gray pants and a black jacket. They weren't able to find him. However, police say no crime was committed here. Back to you. Scary situation, Alicia. Thank you. It is a stalemate between the city of Salinas and the police officers union. They're having a tough time reaching any sort of agreement relating to salary and benefits. And the city says they have now put their final effort, final plan forward. The city's plan offers no pay increase for police officers and officers would have to pay 5% of their own health insurance premiums. The Salinas Police Officers Association wants a three year contract for officers, which would include a two and a half percent pay bump every year. While the city looks to get a rising deficit under control and the current deal reportedly put together by a third party, the union tells us this plan would amount to a substantial pay cut for their officers. We're in the midst of a staffing crisis uh, and by forcing police officers to take a pay cut, uh, they're going to force more police officers to leave the city. Officers also worry it will affect response times for emergencies, recruitment and crime prevention. Salinas Mayor Joe Gunter says the city has to worry about its financial stability right now with an increase in the public employees retirement cost looming. An understanding between the two parties ended back in late 2018. They began negotiating new terms this year, but in early April, the city said neither party could come to an agreement. That's where, where we are now. A number of traffic projects start on Highway 68 tomorrow. One will widen shoulders, improve signage and upgrade the guardrail. That'll be west of Bishop Avenue to just east of Chomp. Shoulder closures will start tomorrow from 830 in the morning to 4. More closures will happen over the night on Wednesday and Friday from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. And now, Chief Meteorologist Dan Siaka with your weather authority forecast. Well, we're starting to get to that time of year where our weather goes from very consistent weather to somewhat more roller coastery weather. Well, that's certainly going to be a possibility as we have some cooler temperatures right now, but much warmer temperatures on the way. 
and also the potential for some precipitation tomorrow morning. So let's talk about that. Here's a look at our satellite picture. We see a trough of low pressure here on the west coast. When the lines dip like this, that is a trough of low pressure. What that is going to do is start to lift up on our marine layer. Already starting to see those low clouds thicken up tonight across the region. And we'll take a live look here from our Domenico's on the wharf cam. At the moment, not seeing any of the clouds right on the ground. They are a little bit higher, but we do have some low clouds out there and they will continue to thicken up through the overnight hours. One thing I'm tracking is our humidity levels. We're seeing the humidity raise in places like Carmel Valley up to 93% right now, 83% in Watsonville. As these clouds get thicker tonight, as they raise up with the marine layer deepening, they'll be able to hold less moisture and we may squeeze some drizzle out of it to the point where we may actually see a little bit of moisture accumulating on the roadways. So we'll be taking a closer look at the potential for some precipitation in your forecast, and that's going to come up in just a few more minutes. Back to you. All right, Dan, thank you very much. The Santa Cruz City Council is considering a plan to impose a curfew on Main Beach. They're going to discuss this at their meeting tomorrow night. The city says an increase in nuisance crimes because of the homeless camping on the beach is what led to this move. City officials are recommending that the dry sand portion of Main Beach be closed to the public from midnight to just an hour before sunrise. A similar curfew has been in effect on Cowell Beach since 2013. PG&E released a plan to offer billions of dollars in aid for victims of wildfires that sparked because of their electric equipment. $18 billion for people, insurance companies, and cities. The plan was filed in court today as the company seeks to get out of bankruptcy. PG&E says it could raise more than $30 billion in debt and equity financing from the largest banks in the nation. News from the Capitol, a bill that would have California create special banks to handle cash from the pot industry will not pass this year. The bill's author, Senator Bob Hertzberg, pulled the bill. He says he hopes to put it back up for a vote next year. Despite protests in Sacramento today, Governor Newsom signed two bills that will crack down on doctors who write fake medical exemptions for children's vaccinations. One allows public health officials to investigate doctors who write more than five of these exemptions. The other adds a phase out period for medical exemptions. Protesters surrounded the Capitol today, blocking entrances with some people even arrested. Many of them parents who say they want medical freedom, but others say it's about protecting kids. My son almost died um, post vaccination, and so I don't believe that we should be forced um, to ever put anything in our bodies. I think it's really important um, for all children to be protected from um, diseases that are preventable, and these are dangerous diseases that can really harm uh, children and other vulnerable people in the community. The bill's author created the now law in response to the massive measles outbreak. He says it's about protecting the public and preventing another public health scare. Health issues related to vaping are on the rise. Last week alone, cases doubled to 450, including five deaths. The closest one to us was in Los Angeles County. Health experts in Santa Cruz County are urging people to put down the e-cigarettes. We're seeing the same thing across the country, at least until these health officials have more answers. They say that patients are coming into their doctors reporting symptoms similar to a cold or flu, but typical medications don't work. They're also complaining of coughing, nausea, and trouble breathing. And while no exact cause has been nailed down, all of the patients say they vaped. Originally, vaping was meant to be a way to get people to stop smoking, but many say it's become a lot more than that now. I feel like it's very societally cool right now to be vaping, and I think that we should all just be questioning it. Health officials are telling doctors to be aware and ask about vaping history. They say it's important to collect the vaping device itself that's been used, if that's possible, and then report it to the county health agency. <music> News across the nation, criticism for President Trump over a canceled secret peace meeting with Taliban leaders. The president made his announcement over the weekend saying an attack in Kabul that killed an American soldier and 11 others is what prompted his move. While there has been praise for canceling the talk, he's taking heat for having it scheduled in the first place. A terrorist organization that doesn't recognize nation states, that kills innocent women and children, to have them at Camp David uh, is totally unacceptable. To bring the Taliban on the eve of the 18th anniversary of September 11th is about as outrageous as it gets. The Taliban responded, saying the move to cancel would, quote, not harm anyone else but the Americans themselves. They did leave the door open for future talks.
In the days before the 18th anniversary of 9-11, three former heads of Homeland Security addressed the biggest current security threats to this country. They spoke about how threats have changed dramatically since 2001. Terrorist threat to our homeland has evolved significantly over the last 18 years to smaller scale terrorist inspired attacks, inspired either by a terrorist group overseas or by uh, extreme right wing violent nationalism. They also addressed the threat of climate change, the overwhelming mission at the border, and foreign government interference as we get closer to the 2020 election. The group warned against what's called deep fakes and how those can be used to trick American voters. I don't know. I mean, other, others would have to make their own headlines. For me, it's returning to my love. I'm very grateful to return to what I love to do. Tomorrow on CBS This Morning, Billy Bush says he's got a new mindset and explains the controversy over the infamous Access Hollywood tape with President Trump. He sits down with Gail King and talks about his return to television. CBS This Morning starts at 7 in the morning following Wake Up right here on KION. Coming up, chaos at a parade, spooked elephants and more than a dozen people to the hospital. We head to the Bahamas with a desperate plea for help after Hurricane Dorian and how a local sports team is getting Gilroy strong tonight.